Namaste, Maria Lina. Good afternoon to you in Austria, you and Ranko. And good morning to those of us in the Western Hemisphere from North America and Europe. Good afternoon to all of you in across Central and Eastern Europe and the Middle East. Good evening to us in South Asia. We've got people from all over India and the Southeast of Asia and, and the Far East as well, Australia and New Zealand. Welcome to each one of you. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting messages. I just want to start the uh, session with greetings to Joanne uh, Cox, Christopher Vaz from Washington, DC. Um, we have Ranko Markovic right there in the living room. Nixon Vergi is from Kochi, and uh, Jenny Lobo, Denise Zimelo from Goa, uh, Feroza Godrej from Goa, Stefan Michek, Luke de, Nor uh, Luke de Narona from Bangalore, Mari Fleur Simos from Mumbai. Welcome, all of you, and thank you for taking the time. Marlena, thank you. You are, we are so thrilled to have you. You are a famous, famous personality, musician, performer, professor, philosopher, and so many things packed in one. We're so thrilled to have you here with us. We look forward to the evening of enlightenment, music, passion, and a peek into a journey going, going back in order to look forward. Yes, and I want to say something here. We're really honored to have you, privileged and honored. And I remember my teacher, Ida Francis, who always wanted to connect you and us together. And it never happened during her lifetime. But soon after that, we were connected and we still are. We have such a strong connection, both as musicians and as friends. So let's begin the evening remembering Ida. Yeah, it is an emotional <laughs> time for Lorraine, Marilena. It's a very emotional time. You know, it's... Uh, it's um, not only a pleasure being with you, but uh, an honor to take this very important uh, step in which the three of us want to share a message. And your teacher, uh, Yona or Lorraine, um, was also one of my role models. You know, she, whatever she did um, as a pianist, but also as a teacher, where she inspired me so much. She lived not very far from my mom's house in Bandra in Bombay. And she'd even come over with her students. She'd ring up my mother and make a nuisance of herself. No, Hetty, I have to meet Maria Elena. She's here only for a short while. Can I bring my students before their exams? And you know, one doesn't realize this so many years ago, but one sees in many human beings, and I, we're talking about India in special, India in particular, that there are teachers, musicians who have the passion which I've grown up with. And that brings us together, Lorraine, you and me, through Ida, whom I really not only ins uh, who inspired me and I cared for very much, but she was a person to be loved. She'd walk for miles to come to concerts and bring this, you know, almost like the mother duck with her little ducklings. And we'd see them all waiting at the bus stop, mm -hmm. waiting for that bus. And it would always be the wrong number. And once or twice I joined them and we came together to Nariban Point where we also had, you know, master classes and, and festivals. Yes, and I want to appreciate you for doing this, uh, Maria Lena. You've done it over the years. You are in the league of the greatest musicians that India has produced, Western classical musicians. Like Zubin Mehta, I know you know him very well, and he knows you very well. And you have come back to India. You've gone abroad. We've ex you've exported yourself and then imported yourself again to share your uh, journey, to share your music with us and all the Western musicians in India. You have given so freely, and we really want to appreciate you for that. Totally. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lorraine. Thank you for, for saying this. But I never once had the feeling I had to come back. Yeah. I never had that feeling. It was always um, it was always a must because for me, I never left my home. Mm -hmm. uh, you you cannot deny your roots, and the roots are the tradition you've grown up with, the genes you've got through your parents and ancestors. And this has also been one of the big, big, big uh, commodities, I can say, and privileges, which I got through my parents. Mm -hmm. So coming back to India is for me almost like returning home. And it's most often once, sometimes even twice a year. Thank you. Um, Thank and that, that makes me especially, and you're quite right, there's one thing which I really want to um, insist on. It's this 
sharing, sharing which has followed me all through, it's almost haunted me through the last, I must say, 50 years. It's going to be very soon 50 years that I've left India. And um, it's as if it was yesterday, because if you love music and you love what you're doing, then you this, this particular thing grows with you. So you don't feel you're getting older. You're just having more experience. And I think that's the journey we're going to talk about. Yes. The yes. next Look forward. few hours. Yeah. Okay. And Marlena, there are many who can identify with this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are many who may not identify, but who will pick up gems yes. from this conversation and from this evening. Um, Let me begin by asking you a question. Thousands of students start learning music and learning the piano. And uh, most people have a dream that they want to be professional and they want to be great and they want to be at concerts. And you were a child prodigy. I know that from your story that you started music early. But could you give us two events in your life that stand out in your, from your early childhood that were building blocks to your career and your um, success as a musician? <laughs> um, well, it, probably in, in this lap of long, 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 long time, it's difficult to choose two. But maybe, we, as you say, we start off right in the beginning. I remember. Um, it sounds almost facetious when I say my mom was a was an absolute passionate musician. I mean, she was definitely my first, not only role model, but an idol and an example. And she teach her little students. And I remember I was once in the kitchen with our with our cook and, you know, stealing as usual tomatoes and things which we're not allowed to do. And I think it must have been two or three. And mom played a note. It was one of the black notes on the keys. And I screamed. I think I could hardly talk. And I only heard this from her much later. Yes. And she was amazed. So she thought, okay, this is, you know, she's just, uh, Marilena is throwing a tantrum. And the whole, the rest of that year, between the ages of, I think, two and a half and three and a half, she'd move at different times of the day and play a wrong note, a black key to find out. And there was never a time when I didn't scream out. So she, I couldn't tell her it was a C sharp or a B flat. Okay. But I knew that there was something in that scale which she had, which was which just didn't suit the matter. Yeah. And I think that was the beginning where she realized, what am I going to do with this monster? And sent me to a teacher who oh. lived down the road. There were there were two spinsters. We call them spinsters in those days. Um, and this was a wonderful teacher, Miss Joseph, who okay. said, what am I going to do with this four-year-old brat? And, and the only thing she could do with me was to put me to an exam, to send me to an exam, which was first steps. Uh, she promised me a gift and I thought, oh my God, let me play for that gift. And I, I, I played and it never seemed to be an effort, um, uh, you know, in all, in all modesty. And I won, I topped the, the Indian list mm -hmm. and I came back and mom was so happy and dad and everybody. And, she, and I said, and where's my gift? And then she presented me with an overlong pencil. I, I remember, remember these pencils which had yeah. like an umbrella thing on the yeah. top? Yes. And I remember when she opened that packet, my eyes were, I still see, see myself in joy and enthusiasm. And then she brought out this pencil and then it was so difficult for me to hide my disappointment. <laughs> but, but that was, disposal. that was, was one of the first. And ever since then, um, I, you know, I, I'm a very bad example for, for most kids, but I've learned it the hard way because it was not because I was a prodigy. I was just absolutely smitten by, by, by the love for music. And I'd come home from school and instead of drinking my cup of tea, I'd rush to the piano and much to the demure of my siblings because they'd say, listen, we want to do this and we want to play with toys. I never had dolls. It was just this piano, which I didn't play with, but I played on. Okay. <laughs> that, that's probably, and my poor father, who's, who's actually um, uh, um, a structural engineer, you know, it was very difficult for him, but he saw the passion in his wife and he saw the dedication that my mother spent with all of us. Mm -hmm. And somehow he just had to give in. <laughs> okay. Great. So, you know, so you are a trial prodigy very clearly, but what do you have to say for music in general? I, um, I won't tell you my beliefs, but what do you think? Should music be learned by everybody? Is it important for... Uh, just generally everyone to have a good grounding in music like they did in the good old days when Greek, uh, the Greek civilization was at its height. <laughs> yes, music was always, always a very, very strong part of, of, of culture. I, I, I think 
there's just again uh, in your sentence there was one word which everything else is correct i think every single human but i don't even think they have to learn it because in every one of us there is this element of yes. music why because music is feeling yes music yes. is something which is not two plus two is four i could tell you lots of anecdotes on that but let's leave that aside yes. so i think every one of us uh, i would even go so far and this is a, the, as i said what i'm saying to you is just mm -hmm. this matter of long long years of conscious learning and mm -hmm. i think a musician whenever never stops learning or never stops being a student because as long as you learn you have you have more knowledge mm -hmm. but in order to get this knowledge you don't have to as a child be forced to learn this word learn in our context let's go back to india and mm -hmm. i think we all have it and when i say I'm not preaching, but I know this for myself. This element of we have to learn. It's not like mathematics. You have to learn mathematics. You have to learn uh, geography to know where you are. But what sometimes what I think is fantastic that most kids do have uh, the, the, the possibility to learn music. But why not the other kids? And it doesn't matter whether they come from socially high standards, whether they come from the elite, mm -hmm. because every child has the possibility of going out into the garden or going out onto the roads and before he plays cricket he sings mm -hmm. i think just like we all breathe nobody has taught us to breathe yes. so if we sing um and i think to this point there's one thing more i, I mean I, I live my life with diagnosis and therapy i mean mm -hmm. i might have a headache and i can stay in bed the whole day and feel sorry for myself mm -hmm. but if i go out and get myself some medication i'm going to get better so yes. if I if you say this to you, I would say, and this is what our mother did with us. I um, mean, it didn't matter which society we came from, which which friends we had. She would just get to that piano, which we were very fortunate to have, and yes. play. And she said that keeps the gossip away. So we <laughs> sing with her. And when you sing, it doesn't matter whether you sing again correctly. These are all words which are you know, sort of impressed on us mm -hmm. or pushed down on us. You just sing because mm -hmm. you let a lot of bad air out. Yes. And you breathe correctly. You know, if people would sing more during the pandemic, pandemia, I'm sure there'd be very, very many less cases of COVID. So this is what, what I think all, and I'm just carry on what I've got of, you know, thought about. Um, kids should be first given the opportunity when they go out. I mean, they're given, they start playing football or they run or they play all the games that Gili Dandu and, you know, all these lovely games, which I miss, pa sat Satra, Panch Patar, and, you know, uh, this seven tile. Exactly. And every time they lose or win, they should sing. Hey, mm -hmm. we won that, we got that. Uh, <laughs> The other thing I would also suggest, and because we don't have too much time for many things, is to be given the opportunity to listen. Yeah. Now, I think there's a very strong difference between listening and hearing. Yeah. We are always hearing our parents, mommy saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't cross the road, it's a red light. Daddy saying, go and study, you have to become something like this. But we forget this power of inner listening. Because if we listen, we're given the chance uh, in moments of silence, to listen to the birds, if there are any, I know uh, in the rural uh, areas, you can hear them in the urban, you can't. But if you allow your child, encourage this child to listen, he or she is going to form his or her own um, estimation of what sound means, to which we'll come later. Yes. This is just my little oh, bit of... Thank you. <laughs> it's wonderful. Thank you, Marielena. You know, uh, that reminds me about languages too. How do we learn? We call something our mother tongue. We call it our mother tongue because it was our mother who began to sing songs to us in that language. And that's how we learn that language, isn't it? It's through song, it's through singing. So even at a very early age, when a child is born, a child is exposed to music. Whether one likes it or not, that's the way we are brought up. Absolutely. And I see a grand piano behind you there, and I'm wondering if there's <laughs> any music for us to listen to, not hear, but listen to. <laughs> oh, I tried very gladly. You know, I, I was just going to say, oh my God, but I'm going to be broke for a thought. I'm going to say, please, can I run to the piano? Because I'd rather <laughs> play it than, than say it. Yeah, okay, sure. I've chosen a piece uh, which I thought might suit this. You know, I wanted to play something which is not... Um, when I say popular, 
uh, it's, it's a beautiful piece. And right through this hour, you will hear glimpses of it. You will hear the melodies. They become familiar to you because it's uh, one of the last pieces which Franz Schubert wrote mm -hmm. six months before his death in 1828. Mm -hmm. He died a year after Beethoven. And last year, we had the Beethoven centenary of 250 years. And Schubert was an extremely great admirer of Beethoven, but didn't want anyone to know except that when one caught him bearing the coffin disguised as one of these, you know, all in black, but to show his great respect for this master, for this genius, he was there. So this little piece is one, one out of three pieces, which has three different moods. Now moods is something which we can also talk through right through, uh, which I would not call mood maybe, but a phase. Mm -hmm. And Schubert, whom we all know as a sing, singing composer, composer of songs, has an absolutely beautiful melody, which he uses to introduce the piece. It's a sort of like a visiting card mm -hmm. and suddenly breaks into a strange mood of pulse, which I think Lorraine will understand me when I say from major to minor. Mm -hmm. uh, we will explain these two terms later. But what I want to do is I'll play you this theme repeat it, and then just before it goes into that tumultuous thing, I'll stop. And then we can carry on talking. Is that okay? That's that perfect. sounds perfect. perfect. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And may I, may I uh, request the audience to please participate in commenting and appreciating and asking questions. I'm having a look at the chat. <laughs> you don't worry, Maria Elena, I'm going to just share with you whatever yes, comes. Yes, yes. Do you yeah. see comments coming? It was so melodious and so beautifully played. It was so beautifully played. I think we are just transported into the world of Schubert right now. And that's great. Um, thank, you, Lord, thank you. He, he lived a very short life. He only lived 31 years and he composed almost 1200 pieces, 1200 oh. pieces, you know, a lot of symphonies, of course, a lot of songs, but much chamber music, beautiful piano sonatas, you know, so um, a composer that 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 sort of haunts musicians all through their lives. Yes, the melodies are just simply super, super. melodious. 
Beautiful. Wait till you hear the second and the third part. So yes, we we'll look forward to that. We will look forward to that. But while while that comes up in a short while, I'd like us to take uh, you know all of us through the journey from being a child prodigy to winning that long pencil of yours and getting motivated <laughs> and inspired. And then came a time. Now, Marilena, you are brilliant in your studies. You're a brilliant person, and you could have chosen like Einstein could have. He, he was he, he was good for what he was, he's known for what he has become, but he could have, he says, if he chose, he could have been a musician too. He plays the violin. Now, you had a choice to make, right? And your move, I want to cover that journey to Austria and that decision you had to make and the circumstances around that decision and the scholarship. If you would like to just take us through that journey at that juncture of your life mm -hmm. between childhood and moving and choosing your career or your path as towards adulthood. Aubrey, uh, again, you helped me very much because I listened carefully to the question. You know, while you're posing the question, I'm trying to form an answer. And um, you threw the ball into my court in which you said talent. And then you, I mean, can we, can we leave out the word child prodigy for the next hour? <laughs> done, done deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But there's another word which, which, which is very strong, uh, almost comes as close, and you compared, uh, you know, sort of made a comparison with Einstein, which was the word talent. Yes. Now, I am uh, completely convinced, I mean, I'm trying to say whatever I say to you now, it's uh, not out of uh, facetiousness or uh, out of flattery, but things which I've really gone through, and then I'll tell you the journey of it's, it's not a one all, all an uphill. Um, movement. But talent, if one has talent, um, I've really begun to believe that talent is something, if a person has talent, and that talent has to be discovered, it has to be, it's very often latent, and has to come out. I never gave my parents a chance for anything latent. I just knew this, you know, was my aim. But as you said, Einstein, who would have rather become a musician, I think that people who are talented or have had the opportunity to be able to express their talents in certain ways can do anything in inverted commas. Because within this word, anything, there's the capability of taking risks, mm -hmm. the capacity of standing up if you fall down, mm -hmm. the, um, the, 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 the mood for adventure, Mm -hmm. You want to try things out. And then I, I uh, am very careful between the words inquisitiveness and curiosity, mm -hmm. just like between listening and hearing. Mm -hmm. So if you, I know curiosity killed the cat, but um, I don't mind going up to that stage till one tells me, listen, it's time you stopped. And I think these, these are, this, these, this all belongs to this word talent. And um, since I've been teaching since the last 35 to 40 years, I try to provoke my students, whether they're children or, or uh, adults, or I have even adults who have, who have other professions whom I'm now teaching, I'm guiding them and say, listen, I'm sure there's something in you, you and you that you still don't know. You might be 65 and 70, but there's something which you still haven't discovered. Mm -hmm. So go out and search for it. And, and um, so what I think is it's, it's, it's important to let parents know, parents who find things in their children. Some are very good in maths, others are very good in table tennis. The mm -hmm. thirds are very good in, um, uh, you know, uh, elocution. Mm -hmm. So to give them that opportunity and to use, share this feeling of discovery between students, children and their parents and teachers. Mm -hmm. So start, that's, that's the word to the word talent, you know? And I, I, I'd like to share this because I think this is something, especially I see you and I admire you both as educators and you've gone a long way, talk about my journey. I, we know each other quite long and I know how hard it has been. I always think of that little spider that's, uh, you know, happily when the, when the family is on holiday, has the whole house to, itself and gets spins that little web and grows up and then comes the house frau back and within a swoop she's taken that broom and away and it's not a day before that little spider 
has found another corner, which, uh, you know, these are little things which, which help me because uh, when you talk in synonyms to kids, then they sort of appreciate it figuratively. Mm -hmm. So my, my journey started, well, I, I, I really loved, I, I, I wasn't so much involved in my school, but when I came to college, I mean, for some strange reason, I, I, I got this first class. And at th in those days, 100 years ago, there was something called double promotion. <laughs> and so I went straight from, from senior Cambridge into interarts. And I think I was the most unhappy person because I thought, listen, this you're, you're costing me one important year of my life because I think the college days were the absolutely most impressionable years for me. And I missed that year. Mm -hmm. And um, during this period of time, as you both know, there were no music institutions. Mm -hmm. So I had this unbelievable teacher and I really would like to name her because she has been a um, driving force, not only for me, but many of my colleagues who have now are all over the world doing different things, Madam Olga Kran. She, my mother sent me to at least two or three other teachers who all failed on me and they said, listen, dear Hetty, we can't do anything with this child. We don't know what to do with her, you know, because exams just just flew through. And it was at Madam Olga Kran, I mean, Olga, we at the first stage, we had to call her Olga because, you know, she said no formalities, which made it even more difficult because you respected this unbelievable human being who had everything in her. She even had a problem with her hand. She had a sort of an arthritis where she couldn't move. She was a brilliant pianist, had won international competitions, came back and uh, caught this artist, artist cramps and couldn't play. So her fourth and fifth finger would just curve in. But instead of getting depressed, there we go about talent, she invested all that love and passion to her students. So she gave us everything she had. And you know, she, she'd even, if I hadn't, and she was a very expensive teacher. And my parents, we were five children. And my father said, listen, I can't afford doing this and that and the other, but if you think it's good for you, so I'd go drive an hour by bus to go to Olga's house and she'd have. Marilena, Lena, uh, it's going, okay, you're back again. Okay, the audio, I just finished, audio, yeah. yeah. The audio just went off a bit. No, no, you're back again now, good to have you back. But the audio there, we just lost you, you know, a bit. Okay. All right. Um, um, Marilena, what we will do is I've got a recording of uh, your performance uh, with Ranko Markovic in the USA, and I'll play that a bit. Maybe if you could, um, you know, we'll, we'll hope that your connection uh, gets sorted out in the next few minutes. If you would like, you could log off and log on again, or you could, yeah, you'll come back. So, uh, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to have a performance, uh, a pre-recorded performance uh, of Marilena playing four hands with Ranko Markovic on the piano. And here you go. <laughs>
Uh, that was bravo. That was fantastic. Now, uh, you know, we are living in a time of technology and uh, we're still learning, right? So that's fine. And uh, Marlena, you're back on the frame and uh, your sound is back again. And we'll continue where you, you know, where we were interrupted. Okay. Um, all I can say is um, these fabulous years in college, uh, a year in Sophia with the nuns. And then I had to choose a subject because I needed the boys and went off to, to St. Xavier's where I uh, completed my graduation with, with um, psychology and philosophy. And um, strangely enough, I got a fellowship and I even taught for six months at the Bombay University because this fellowship was for the for an award I won for Shakespeare for Macbeth. And then my Olga Kran said, okay, fine, everything's, uh, you know, uh, it was 1969, 70, and uh, my father, of course, was ready to get me married. And Olga said, you have a choice. You, you know, you, you have all the privileges, you have all the possibilities, etc." And she said, but, but we have a competition which you can take part in. And that's for the 200th birth year of Ludwig van Beethoven. And that's Ooh. why it was exactly 50 years 50 ago. 50 years, wow. And it so happened that I played, it was organized by the Max Müller Bhavan, which was the, that time the Goethe Institute. And this competition somehow just was the key for me to the door I had, which was locked all these years, although I had done so much. You know, we're all, what we should never stop doing is search. I think we, we should keep searching for whatever. I mean, I hope we all have the love which we search for, but you always have so many other things. Hope, your happiness at the moment in the pandemic time, we're searching for other things, which we'll talk about later. And I got the key to the so-called door, which was this scholarship, which uh, Goethe Institute offered me mm -hmm. to go abroad. They said, there's something in you that sort of Beethoven would be excited about. So why don't you go and try? So after a short while in Munich, because it was, it was the German city at that time, I came to Vienna and was very, very fortunate to get the scholarship because my father would be five of us and said, listen, just as I couldn't, you know, um, send you to, to have, have uh, to different private schools because we have five of you, I even had almost got a scholarship to Bloomington, Indiana in the States, but it was only for boarding and not for lodging and not for the tuition. So there were lots of little things which happened. And then this scholarship came and uh, on condition, I stayed with nuns and helped them with uh, washing up and babysitting and, uh, you know, doing, and I said, I was prepared to do anything and everything. So talk about the journey. I landed there on the 25th of January, 25th. I remember the date because minus 25 degrees. And I had this beautiful sari on with mountain boots. And I walked into this uh, close to sort of a, you know, it's like a student hostel where the nuns greeted me. There were just one of them who spoke English, mm -hmm. completely German. And they looked at me, they said, listen, uh, you've come now dressed for the beach or what, what can we do with you? And, you know, with all of these little things where you're afraid, you're not sure why you're doing this, uh, you don't speak the language, and I was told, okay, German is, uh, you know, a very easy language. It's just ja and bitte means yes. And if you say bitte, which is B-I-T-T-E, it means please. So it's a very polite language and say nein. And in case you really don't know what's anything, say keine Ahnung, which means no idea. So I came there, they said, what's your name? I said, danke schön, thank you. What are you studying? No idea. And you know, uh, it's now easy to laugh about it, but when you're young and you're, you, you're freezing your butt out, you don't know what to do with yourself. And, uh, but something was there that was stronger than all of it. And that was the passion. Mm -hmm. And I think one or two of these nuns recognize that in me. You know, I, I stay indoors for a long time, cry myself out of homesickness, um, you know, try to pretend I was happy, go after all the meals, wash up the dishes, um, things like that. I mean, I was, I was a very brave and courageous student of that hostel. Till one day, and again, again, it was what I call divine guidance, was um, an inspiration from heaven where one of the ex-students who had now finished wanted to give her piano away. Mm -hmm. And this was an old 
absolutely, when I say Ratpati, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Piano, yeah. which had keys, half of them didn't sound. But you know, I, I found that uh, sort of a stepping stone to the next. And I got a little room for myself, which was not heated. So they said, listen, when you go there, so you know, one of the nuns gave me gloves and made holes in the, in the fingers so I could play with these gloves on. I had three uh, cardigans, a uh, blanket, and I'd practice. And I'd sit there for eight hours practicing. And I was quite happy to have a room where I found everybody else outside, you know, falling apart in the snow. These are little things I remember because the journey is not always a bed of roses. Then I came to my professor who was a wonderful person. And of course he had to prepare me for the audition for the entrance exam, which was very strict. So he said, uh, dear Miss Fernandez, what, what are the pieces you've learned? And I thought I was the best in the world. You know, you come there feeling, well, you have to play the game. And I said, I've played a Bach and I've played a Haydn and I've played a Beethoven. And he said, um, okay, that's all an exercise. What else? <laughs> And I almost died because, and then I thought I was being specially, uh, you know, uh, arrogant. And I said, you know, I even got one piece by Bella Bartok. <laughs> and he said, okay, <laughs> fine. That's the, the, maybe the plum in the cake. But now we start talking serious stuff. Yes. And he put me down to really to foundational work, like finger exercises, uh, phrasing, phrasing exercises, singing exercises. He made me the first two weeks just sing everything I played, you know. Voices, uh, Lorraine, you'll understand what I mean. Yeah. Uh, two and three part inventions of Bach. Okay. To play one voice, to sing the other. Mm. Play one voice, sing the other. And it became such part of my nature, you know, and I was somebody, I must say, uh, I loved practicing. I always loved practicing. I missed it. In fact, I, I get withdrawal symptoms, you know, I mean, uh, people offer me a glass of wine and say, first, do you have a piano? Fine. After that, the wine, you know, sort of thing. So I just enjoyed and I really used to practice eight hours a day. So this was a very, very tough time. And I think my professor, again, just like the nun who got me that piano, he saw something behind these lines and said, OK, I'm going to renew the scholarship. And because I had it just for, for a very, very short while. And dad said, listen, if you don't finish, we don't have any money, you come back and get married, sort of thing, you know. So there was something, that knife in my back, <laughs> which kept me going. And, and um, so this is just, uh, just to cut a long story short, and that's how my life started. No, Thank that's you. an amazing, an amazing journey. Thank you for sharing, yeah. Marilena. It means a lot, I'm sure, to everybody that's listening and to all of us. The journey goes on, don't you think? I think even today you have the same spirit. That's you right. You can see the same sort of drive and the same, the knife is still there for some reason. <laughs> you know, in this time of technology, in this time of technology yeah. with WhatsApp, I remember I was talking about what application, yeah. okay? And I would apply a couple of things that I've just listened. And there are many, many from across the globe and there are many children and many parents also listening to this. And I think there's a lot to pick up. And one of the things I'm picking up for them and for me, and because I'm still learning even at, as young as I am, right? And as young as you are, you're still learning and you're still practicing. And that's amazing to be a student at any age, at any time, to be an ardent student, to persevere with diligence and never give up on that. Never, ever, never, ever think that we have arrived. And that is brilliant. That is beautiful. That's humility, you know? That's number one. Number two, as I was picking up a lot of things that you were saying, you know, you touched upon entrepreneurship because the points that you talked about talent and the talk you talked about, you know, when we talk about decision making, the, the, the risk taking capacity, the curiosity, the, the spirit of exploring things, the spirit of adventure, the spirit of risk taking, the capacity to risk take, you know, take risks. All of these are qualities that an entrepreneur needs. He needs to be not just a jack of all trades, he's to, he needs to literally be a master of all trades. And you have actually embodied the spirit of entrepreneurship in your journey as a musician and as a professor and all that you've been. So it's amazing how no matter what field you choose, the perseverance and hard work remains the same. That's, That's right. astounding. 
Isn't Maybe it? I can add one sentence to that, Aubrey, and say, I think for what I try to do is to share these experiences, uh, the ups and the downs, because if you don't have downs, you don't even know what an up is. Mm -hmm. You have to go through, a, a, you know, a lot of things which you have to struggle for. And as you say, I, life is a journey, right? Right mm -hmm. through. And I try to work with them exactly on these planes and say, listen, I want to learn from you. But, and I, one thing I tell them, which I tell myself every, every, every now and then is there is always a 50% chance in life, whether you're an entrepreneur, a diplomat, uh, uh, an economist, um, a dentist, or you know, whatever, or, or an artist. And um, if you take that 50% chance, you give yourself that 50% chance, you have a chance to either win or not win, I wouldn't say lose. Because within that 50%, which you might have won, there's another 50%. That's so right. my, I have a checklist for me, which is yes, a box in which I put my yes answers, my no answers, and then my maybe answers. So these maybe answers again have a box which say yes, no, maybe. And so this comes this, not the law of diminishing returns, which we all learned in eco economics, but it's, it's a box in which you say, okay, that 50%, I'm going to make it 51% because it's easier to uh, uh, attack that 1% than have 49 where you're losing, you know, more than that. So, and I share this with my students and I have a lot of extraordinary, uh, you know, reactions from them, how they've gone through life, what they've done. Let's, let's come to the pandemic. But before we do that, may I play you the second part of my- Please do. The piano is Schubert. awaiting you. <laughs> Franz Schubert, the first part was E flat major, which was this very lyrical, melancholic mood. And all of a sudden he goes with one note, which sort of an, an, an uh, intermezzo, which takes us into a minor. Now it's up to you and all our listeners to decide what they hear, okay? Thank you. 
that tribute to the genius of Schubert with your magical interpretation, Marilena. <laughs> that was absolutely fabulous. So Thank you. Thank I don't you. have words to express myself, and I'm sure everyone's feeling the same. You truly are a genius, an artist, and everything's coming through with your beautiful personality and what you are and how you're interpreting this piece. It was absolutely beautiful. I'm very That's inspired by it myself. Lorraine, you you are, I, you know, I think you are, you yourself, I'm just, you know, passing on, it's like a mirror and I have a feeling yes. you see yourself and your spirit and your soul because I've heard you play and I know what you've done to, to your husband and also to your many, many lovely students. Keep Thank it up. You. If I can give you I something, I'm it. happy about it. <laughs> well, Thank she's you. very encouraged. You can see it. <laughs> I can. I can. Thank she's you. radiating something. <laughs> That's wonderful, Thank Marilena. Thank you so much. Marilena, you. you know, this is brilliant. This, this journey is just simply brilliant. From India, where you were born in Mumbai, and the childhood journey, to the journey in Austria, and the challenges that you faced when you began, and I'm sure there were many other challenges as you spent your time there. Uh, but that was brilliant, just the conveying the spirit of what it is to succeed despite all odds and despite many failures, that 50% that can become 51 or can become 49, but going after that 1% that becomes, that makes all the difference. That is a brilliant professor at heart teaching her students across the globe. I really appreciate that. You know, Dr. Mariana Fernandez, it's brilliant having you and having this conversation with you. It's so wonderful. <laughs> most happy about is that right through the world <clears throat> this has become the greeting of the day people who never yes. knew what our namaste was yes. in austria they they come to you because we have to keep an elephant between us the distance <laughs> social distancing and they all do this and i say listen i was born with this so i feel <laughs> that's one of the wonderful things where our indian namaste has gone through the world is that right <laughs> and there's a lot that's happening india is going to export a lot india has exported the number zero india has exported the namaste and has exported ayurveda and has exported sorry chess 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 okay. chess and we're talking about Ayurveda, we're talking about yoga, and we're talking about music. I think it's time for Indian music and Indians to go. So you are an Indian export <laughs> to the Western world. Marilena, you embody that, you know? Whatever that means. <laughs> yes, whatever that means, but that's the flip side as well. We're talking about the flip side. Before that, and there's a pandemic we want to talk about. But before that, this journey now from Austria, you went and traveled across the globe. You've been to North America, to across performing and, and collaborating. collaborating and performing. This is a collaboration. Thank you so much. But you've been a performer and a collaborator across continents, across North America, across uh, Europe, across Asia, in India, across cities, in Southeast Asia, in, in many various parts of the world. And I'd like you to take us through quickly uh, on, a, on a, a glimpse, you know, in a, a quick, and, and maybe some learnings, maybe some anecdotes from that vast expanse of experience that you've had. Yes, if I, if I do a few things which I'd like to say, and I, I, I do think now, you know, I'm looking for advantages of not only getting older, but as my friends tell me, you're not getting older anymore, my dear, you are old. Um, uh, it's, uh, I think- I disagree, <laughs> you're, young, you're young at heart. <laughs> this experience, we were talking about this venture. Let's go from adventure to venture. You venture yes. towards things. And the experience, many of us are, are a little bit inhibited to, to accept a bad experience. Hmm. But even a bad experience in the end is a good experience because if you didn't make that, have that experience, you couldn't know what you should do otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So um, what I'm trying to say, it's this, this form of wisdom which comes. And I do think I'm really, when I talk about, I really have traveled because that's one of my, when I can't say hobbies because I've been always sent professionally to all these parts of the world. It's become almost like a mission. And I call it a mission because I do think our Indian roots, and I say this in all modesty and humility, uh, goes back, it's not only the spirit, it's the spirituality in us. 
And this is something you cannot touch. You can touch your brain, you can touch your heart, you can't touch feelings, you can't touch the sense of spirituality or, or uh, you know, which, which, which it goes beyond. And I think that it is in us. When you say Ayurveda or you say yoga or you say whatever has happened, even, and I must say, our Indian music has mm -hmm. something so strong in us. Talking about moods, talking about what Shubet did in his major and minor. What, is, what are our rags? Sometimes I think of them, although I've not grown up on them, it just has to rain, you have a Bhairavi, you have a Meg, you have a Mas, you have, you know, or the sunshines, you have different moods which these sitarists or tabla players, they just get into a mood and play the rag. And uh, this is something in, I can only talk about myself, and with this divine guidance, with this God-given gift, which I say, I've been able to transform uh, ideas, thoughts, uh, approaches to music throughout the world. And it doesn't matter where they are. Uh, you know, I've even played in Spitsbergen because for many years during my um, education, I played on ships and I did cruises. And I thought no agent is going to take me to Spitsbergen or to the Galapagos Islands where I played for the, not the dinosaurs, but those huge big turtles you know, tortoises and all, which just lie there and, and, and we think we're always afraid of them because we see them in a, in a completely distorted form. Mm -hmm. Or up there where the, you know, the, um, the, the seagulls have their mating time and we are warned not to photograph them because the mothers are, are very strong about the, the, the babies. And these are, these are influences and, and, and um, impressions which are so strong in me, which I feel, okay, if I can go to Spitsbergen and the next city is somewhere in, in the Caribbean, then I must take this, what I've got there, put it into my little bag of spirituality and spread it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's this, it's this which, is, um, which we, we Indians do. I mean, it's a very uh, profane example to say our food. Look mm -hmm. at our food in India. I mean, I, I love cooking, but I love cheating in cooking, you know, so I just put into every beefsteak a little very freshly ground chili powder and the people say, what was that? And I call it magic, you know, so yeah. it, I think this, this is something in us Indians, which is so deeply rooted, yes. we cannot put a finger to it. And, and I feel as long as God allows me to, to go on this, on this message, you know, I, I, I feel it's a message, which, which I'm able to share and spread and uh, fortunately playing the piano i don't need too many words but with you i can share them because i think you understand what i'm trying to say so th this has been this been i mean extraordinary um, experiences I, I i write out i've started writing all my views these months now of of uh, quarantine and you know sort of l l covid to do a lot of writing to go down memory lane and not only the beautiful parts but also the less attractive parts mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and I'm playing on cru uh, cruise, cruises, uh, there are a lot of stormy weather, you know, talking of that, I had a little club, um, and in this club there was this beautiful nut brown grand piano, so I had um, people after the dinner coming there for their uh, drink cognac and their cigar, and Maria Elena on the piano playing Sweet Nothings, and you know what I love to do is, is, is to just go through the whole. And this was again Mummy's gift, which she gave me. Just play all the community songs, play the songs of the 40s and 50s and 60s. And I'd have these fabulous people. And one day there was a very, very, very strong storm. We were on our way to to Colombia, and um, all of a sudden the ship turned. 180 degrees and turned complete direction. And there was I at the piano, I was just going to play this huge Rachmaninoff chord and the piano moved off. I, I was there, I just hit that. And I thought, what is the matter? I mean, it was a sort of steady on that, on that stage, but it was so bad as you can imagine. And little by little, I had no idea because when, I'm, when I play and completely involved, I found everybody who had gone. I said, where are all my, you know, handsome, uh, gentlemen who, who, you know, come and talk to me and where are all those beautiful, dress, elegantly dressed ladies? Nobody was there. I didn't realize that this was one of the nights where everybody was ill, totally seasick. 
So what I did was I finished my piece with the Chopin's revolutionary etude, which I'm sure Lorraine knows, and got all my aggression out of that piece. And I said, you piano, you just stay here because I need you tomorrow morning. <laughs> and went to the bridge and I, and I confronted the, the captain. And he looked at me, he said, you know, my darling, you poor little pianist, you don't even know what's going on outside your club. <laughs> we've been having since the last two hours, we've had the most atrocious storm. Um, there has been a problem. There's a drug uh, case going on in Colombia. We cannot go there to Bogota, but we are uh, turning towards Jamaica and we had to do it within, uh, you know, minutes, turn this huge big ship. And because of that, and then he opened up, I'll never forget that, a chart, a, a, a wave chart of, you know, and showed me six different layers of waves, sort of the currents, which go right down, deep down to the bottom of the ocean. And he explained to me, and I said, listen, all I want is a bed, you know, because it was uh, quite late at night. But he gave me that feeling. And this is another thing I'd like to share with you, is that when teachers educate kids in music, Talk to them, explain to them why you're telling them to play loud or soft. Because we, we to, in today's world, as Aubrey said, technology, our kids are much more uh, cleverer than all of us put together, you know, on a drop of their little um, laptops or their mobiles, they know. So if you tell them why you want them to do something, they'll, you'll probably win their trust, win their courage, and then leave them alone for a week to say, okay, you understood what I said. Now next week, show me how well you can do it on your own. So this feeling of independence is something at an early age, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing, since I'm already in this mood is why the piano? Mm -hmm. uh, I know it's a big problem having pianos in India. It's nobody's fault. It's our, it, it's our, the tropics, we're in the tropics, climatic um, um, intervention, etc. Why not learn to sing? I, I mean, uh, there are kids in certain parts of India who make their own little flutes, uh, places where they play little violins. Why not percussion? Because when you play percussion, you learn pulse. Yes. And we cannot live without rhythm, you know? So uh, I'm trying to put as much as possible in a packet. And, yes. and these are the little things I take with me on my journey to different countries. Send a message, which I've just learned from somewhere else, and bring back a new message yes and i think that's great what your whole thought process and the way you go about things is fantastic because that's what we need it's not elitist this music learning or participating shouldn't be an elitist activity anyone can uh, can do it anyone can participate in it and you've done it so well maria lena you've collaborated with musicians and you've uh, taken sounds of different regions i know you've done a lot of work on the go and mando as well and not just the Goan Mando because you come from that region, but every other part of the world. I think we would love you to share some of your experiences with that, that music and some music as well that you <laughs> that <laughs> that percussion. Yes, talking about this elite, um, you know, um, it, it's, it's very interesting because uh, it's very true and it's not only India. It's not only India. Um, I always say little knowledge is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, we, those who be talking about the brain drain and going abroad and why don't we come back etc because we do not have the possibility for me as i said i'm hungry for knowledge and if i come back and i don't have a live concert which i haven't had now for this last year mm -hmm. uh, thanks to um, corona um, it's not easy to learn yeah but mm -hmm. three things come to my mind you have the high society where we are told i say the we um, you are somebody Okay, period. You're a child of 10 and you're told you are somebody. Mm -hmm. You come to the middle class and it says you have to become somebody. Mm -hmm. So you're throwing, uh, you're, you're thrown into a certain, um, not a straight jacket, but into an imprisonment of, well, I have to do something to become somebody. And mm -hmm. if you come from a less privileged class, then you are nobody. So why try to become somebody, you see? So these are three very radical steps which are probably indirect, mm -hmm. but they do influence a child who's growing up and sometimes tragically enough, a child with talent. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The child with talent. I know a lot of very affluent people who have adopted children from mm-hmm. you know orphanages, etc. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable what comes out of these kids. You know, nobody knows who their parents are, were, which families, etc. But they for circumstances. And it's just amazing. And I, I love this, you know, so I write these things down for myself and say, okay, A, B and C, these are three adopted kids. Let me see how they grow, what they do. And, and, and our university offers scholarships also for, you know, underprivileged, etc. So we're trying to do a lot, a lot. So these are the three things to the word elite. And I do think the last thing, and then I'll go and play for you, mm-hmm. is there's no such thing as elite in music. Mm-hmm. There's no such thing. Uh, if you, if you, if, if in a language, because Aubrey mentioned a language, to speak a language, you have to learn it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But to speak music, you have to make it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in order to make it, it's there's no such thing as right and wrong. You just go to that instrument, whichever, or you go to a table, or you go to a drum and bang on it. Then you realize after that if you want to repeat that sound or not. Mm-hmm. Now we come to the word sound and noise, which is also are uh, two different things, which you can let your kids uh, differentiate for themselves because you force them to listen, yeah? Mm-hmm. So uh, you have to, there's, and another thing is there's no such thing as mistake. I mean, you have to make your mistake just like you make a bad experience. If you don't make a mistake, you never know what's a mistake, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And all of us do it. We have to just learn that process of accepting it. And now I go to the piano and play you the third part of Schubert's E-flat piano piece. Thank you.
Wow. Oh, Maria Lena, that was uh, so much of character, variety and tone, touch, color. It's amazing. You know, they say music is mathematics, a lot of mathematics, but I know mathematics can ever capture the energy and the emotions of a musician and an artist, great artist, and you are a great artist and a source of pride. A professor, you are a philosopher, you're a pianist, a performer, and a pride. And thank you so much, Maria Elena. Over to Aubrey. Yeah. <laughs> Maria Elena, thank you. You know, as we'll do the namaste, you know, for to you. You really are. We are so grateful. We are so grateful. Uh, we don't want to take this for granted. I think uh, COVID-19 is a time, the pandemic is a time when we have learned the value of life the precious life that God has given us and the gifts that God has given us. And I think during these challenging times, we need to draw. And that's why we're talking about the various challenges that we have experienced in life. So we can draw from those experiences of one another's experiences and take examples from them and encouragement from them and press on, not giving up, you know? And that's the spirit of what that we want to communicate to the audience and to each other as we watch and listen to one another. But I want to share this with you, uh, Marilena, because we have been talking over the years and we have been sharing and you know the journey, you know, you've shared your journey and we are with you. And I like the spirit of collaboration that we've always had. You've come and stayed with us, you've performed with us, you've done things together and we continue to do things together tonight, today, afternoon in Austria, uh, today, tonight in India and the rest of the, you know, it's, it's beautiful. This collaboration is beautiful, but I just want to share something to the audience at large who are listening that India has much to give. As India has given to the world through Maralena, India has much to give. But it's also in giving that we receive and in receiving that we give. And this collaborative spirit is what I'm seeking to do in this journey. You know, and, and Marlena, I'd like to, you to touch upon this after I finish speaking, but I'd like to express myself here. And then I'd like to listen to you about your experience and maybe that one learning or one episode you can draw from during the pandemic time of the last 10 months or so. During these 10 months for me personally, it's been a learning. You remember I've been doing a research on one man uh, that this nation has produced, the second prime minister of India, Lal Bahadur Shastri. And uh, when the pandemic struck, one of the things I did was uh, the back lawn that was full of grass, we converted it, it into a kitchen garden growing vegetables, because that's what this great man did. In his front lawn that had grass, he grew wheat. And his wife, Lalitaji, began this kitchen garden movement. Now, what we have struggled to do in our own ways, and you know our struggles, through the Rain Music Academy, we have endeavored to teach students music and take the boundaries of students to not just the elite and not just the so-called talented, but give it to as many as can receive it. And through the Land Trust, which is a not-for-profit, we have endeavored to go even below. You mentioned the high society, the middle class and the lower class, that they consider nobodies. No, even they need music. And that's where Land Trust comes in. And I think this is a time to request those who can give, to give. And uh, in our nation, we have this corporate social responsibility that is just about begun. And uh, our appeal is to try and reach out to corporates and those who can give towards this cause of making music, enabling music to serve and improve the quality of life of people, whether rich or poor or middle class or whatever. And yeah. uh, you know, it's uh, musicians are so talented. And yet in the world today, it is the salaries or the kind of economic uh, level that uh, one would expect as a musician who is doing full-time work or as a banker or as a lawyer, there's such a big discrepancy and such a big difference. And we have to be closing that gap and ensuring that we educate the corporates and the patrons, the government, that music is as important, if not more important than any other profession. And music deserves the status that it deserves, that it had originally. And uh, what, was, what would be your point on that, Maria? 
Yes, well, uh, that's a very, very important point. We are now it's time to, you know, as I said, diagnosis and therapy. We've talked about so many things. How can we go further? Yeah. And I see the good work that you've been doing. I know, I know it because I've been there with you and watched you in action. I think diligence is a very, very important part. It just doesn't come from anywhere. It's not enough just to have talent. As I said, mm -hmm. if one has talent, then one is also hardworking because one wants to achieve something for oneself so that one can share it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is the whole purpose of it. And, and, and um, um, Lorraine, to you, uh, these corporates, etc. Do any of them realize that at some stage, maybe uh, at, at the age of seven or eight, they were also in your school or maybe they were also learning music and gave up to get, you know, so uh, it, it's, it's very often that people tend to forget, mm -hmm. uh, conveniently forget. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, it's again human nature. Uh, what I'm telling you is again not preaching, but I've gone through it myself. One always remembers uh, uh, the easier part. Mm -hmm. to the bed of roses and, and tries to on the other hand if you do not know that you've been you know when I fell in my garden in a ditch in a deep ditch which was over one meter deep and I, I uh, you know had 18 stitches etc I'll never forget that that's another thing because that foot it was my right foot for my I couldn't pedal for almost six months mm -hmm. uh, these are little things one thinks of and one, one, one admires when one can do it again hard work a lot of therapy, a lot of motoric uh, exercises, etc. So these are the people, they know it, and I'm sure about it. And I've seen a lot of parents, I remember uh, when I played there, we did, we did classes together, we did singing together. Many of these parents were very enthusiastic, but many of them maybe, if I can just, uh, you know, defend them in a little bit, because I know it for myself, don't know. Mm -hmm. we, you, maybe we have not given, up, given them that knowledge that maybe through this little video conference, I hope that there are many, and I know how popular you are because you took me to some of their homes and I was able to talk to them when you were not listening. And, and I know that they appreciate you, they respect you, they admire you for what you've done for their children. Mm -hmm. um, it's this constant uh, competition that most young parents have. Mm -hmm. uh, if I don't, uh, if my child doesn't win in uh, in uh, table tennis, then then the other child is not. You know, so this sort of bullying, but where parents are being influenced. So mm -hmm. uh, the only way to do it is to now and then have little video zooms with parents, parents whom you care for, parents whom you feel with your own psychological um, um, tactic to mm -hmm. um, touch them at a certain point in their minds where that willingness is there. And the yeah. willingness comes from, okay, admitting weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Uh, you admit your weakness, say, okay, fine. Uh, what, one, instead of two steps forward and one back, you have the other way around. Just take one forward and maybe, you know, and, and talking to each other, allowing each one to have her or his say mm -hmm. um, with a lot of respect and a lot of uh, patience and tolerance. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it is getting better. I, I mean, I come to India every year. I have my own little project mm -hmm. since, the, since 2015 in, um, in Bangalore, Mangalore, Goa, where as I, the first time I came, and that was with ha Hotel Palindrome, mm -hmm. they took the risk with me. They had absolutely no idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had no idea where we were going to stay, what we were going to do. They just said, Marielena, whatever you do, we are with you. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it was an investment for a lifetime for me because it had nothing to do with money. But mm -hmm. I learned so many new people mm -hmm. who had no idea that there was something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'd go into the outreach, we'd play for the blind, we'd play for the orphans, we'd play for, uh, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? what's behindered in German, uh, invalids. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we taught them football and while they were playing football mm -hmm. on the beach in Mangalore, the others were playing their instruments. So we caught two or three little boys who dribbled that ball in time to the music. Wow. And then we offered them a scholarship to come to Austria and work with one of our coaches. Yes. You know? So uh, it's, it's definitely trial and error, learning by doing. Uh, one step forward, two back, better than that. Get these young people together. Uh, which you are doing in any case yes and uh, and very soon i mean i i was last night reading about how they went to china why has china become such an incredible chinese uh, music is as old as our indian music mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but but there are a lot of you know when you go to the opium war before the first world war end of the night early 19th century a lot of missionaries came into china mm -hmm. and and uh, the chinese are are from their birth very very hard working you know mm -hmm. Uh, which, which we Indians probably we believe in our in our reincarnation, which is a beautiful thing to believe in. But that keeps us back and says, okay, in this life, I'm, next year, I'm, I, either I'll become a king or a dog. You know, I mean. So these are a lot of things which we have to not fight against, but accept, uh, uh, react to, collaborate, tolerate, and then maybe we'll come to a solution. I, 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 I have no doubt. Yes, I feel we get we've got a lot of support from the community around. Oh, the community has supported us tremendously, all our students and everybody. I'm saying in general for musicians, I think we need to do some more evangelism to get them, more musicians to take up music full time so that the, the kind of quality of musicians can go up and they just don't do a part-time job as a musician, but they take up full-time music. And of course, to get the corporates to sponsor music, just like they sponsor sports. I think that would be, that. that's what I'm talking about in, in, in terms of making a change in society and the way uh, you know, one looks at music, it's such an important aspect of life. So I think we'll we'll work together on this, Maria Lena. You can, we'll do a lot. Yeah. We Sorry to interrupt. You mentioned sports. You yeah. should get some of these uh, wonderful sports uh, men and women, mm -hmm. you know, to join in because I believe music is a sport. Yeah. If you are not hardworking, if you don't use your whole body and your mind, mm -hmm. you cannot you cannot play. It doesn't matter which instrument, you know, you can, can't even sing in a choir. So you can try, you, you threw the word into my mouth, try to get certain sports people, maybe friends of your community, mm -hmm. from the community, go to the, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and have, take a risk, get sports people together, share exactly what we're doing now, talk to each other about these things. You know, it's I talk about the pandemic, if, if I may, or Aubrey now. Yes, yes. please. Yes, please. Um, yeah. We mentioned about performing for an audience. Mm -hmm. I've thrown the ball now to you. Where has there been an audience? People yes. have played in front of cameras and in front of laptops and in front of microphones and in, fr in front of the television. I mean, I don't want to talk of the advantages which we've had compared to the Spanish flu. I mean, we've had telecommunication. We can talk to our families all over the world. Yes. But yes. this feeling of, as an artist, to share, you need some sort of a response, some sort of, if even a person says, I don't like it, it's a response, which you can react to. Mm -hmm. and, and this has turned, uh, uh, talking about not only the advantages, but a lot of young musicians are going through mental anxieties. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, not only you're afraid of being, uh, you know, of, of the contagion, of being infected by the by the by the virus, but you just sit at home and you're alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can tell you quite honestly, with me when I'm on my own, sometimes I just don't go to the piano because I'm, I'm afraid. What am I practicing for? Where's the drive? Where's the motivation? Oh. Mm -hmm. And I literally have to force myself, you know. So I have to become my own student and say, okay, Marilena, what would your teacher have told you? Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. And I, I'm helping a lot of my, uh, my uh, you know, students who have just finished. They're mm -hmm. set out in the world with their distinctions and are waiting. And now they can't. So we have meetings now and then online just ourselves. You know, we all take a glass in our hand, whatever is in it, if it's water, tea or anything, says I don't care. But we drink to each other and say, the only virus that can infect us is music. Mm. <laughs> so let's get infected by that and the more we share it whether it's online i mean we did a beautiful section uh, session in goa in suna paranta which is uh, the contemporary art uh, and culture center there we've had uh, with bangalore you know i do these things so you can help each other you can try to compensate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by saying okay you have an audience just knowing now i'm sitting here and playing i practiced because i felt okay i have at least lorraine and aubrey there who are listening to me and and the joy i got you know is is mm -hmm. is not to be expressed okay. and this is exactly what what i think is happening people are getting now better i have a little project now which i mean i feel a little bit embarrassed to talk about it but i thought what can i do for example for the older generation i think to myself i've been living here 50 years so the people i met say 45 years ago, were at that time 35 or 40, now they're 80, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see? And they have no opera, no concerts, they're not allowed to leave the house, they're definitely the risk age, 
senior citizens. So what I do is those whom I know, of course, I must admit these are uh, people with pianos in their houses. I go to them and call this project Concert for Two. So I sit at the <laughs> piano and they sit miles apart. You know, remember that the little thing, dinner for one, where this uh, she sits there and the butler has to drink for all her um, yes. expired, uh, you know, uh, admirers, and and it works. And then I tell them, okay, if you liked it, the next time I can send a student of mine. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's like two households or what we call it here, you can't have more than that. The two people and the wife, the 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 hostess insists on cooking something nice. So you see, what we are doing is we are spreading the good word on a collective basis of art. Art is everything. Yes. You can go to a museum. You can have a good meal. You talk about that, you can play, you can present your work, you know, um, uh, I'm sure there are lots of ways and means of getting away from this horrible feeling of depression and yeah. loneliness. And yeah. we have so much to be grateful for. And yeah. I'm so grateful that I'm here with you today online. Marilena, it's mutual. It's mutual. We're grateful too. And Marilena, just to share with you that we have started this community movement. In fact, as soon as the pandemic started, we did we switched from offline to online within seven days 100 percent of our students we yeah. then went on to do examinations completely 100 percent then when we went on and did an event online completely 100 percent earlier we used to go into auditoria and then we have got it we've, we've started a community movement and this community is global and right now we have watching us live on facebook is a global community okay right now OK, now, so we're getting there. What you just expressed, we're actually doing that. We will continue. Marilena will continue this journey together, OK, Re regularly, frequently. In fact, just to tell the audience, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we are having Marilena giving master classes at Lorraine Music Academy. We're going to use technology to our advantage. And, 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 and the audience will be global, not just in one city. It will be across nations, OK? Yeah. We will also have live concerts. So on the platform of Lorraine Music Academy, there's going to be a lot happening. Wait for news to emerge. And Marilena, you're yeah. going to be a part of it. And also, I want to share this. This is an opportune time to share with, um, with friends and people who probably don't know us yet. To know us better, we came from Mumbai and came to the, into the capital region of India. And it's been 15 years. And we have made progress. I believe this is the time for us to make even more progress. During the toughest time that people say the century has faced, I think disruption is a great opportunity. I look at things positively. And I invite uh, those who want to contribute, even through investments into Lorraine Music Academy, now is the time. We're going to go big. Our vision, our dreams are big, as Malinana has expressed. She has embodied that vision. She's gone and got it despite the obstacles. We're going to go out and get it and reach out and make life better for the world at last through music and music education and music performance and sharing. And now at this note, I want to share, there is another little piece that Marilyn has talking about collaborations. Here is an embodiment of that collaboration with Hotel Palindrin. And this little piece will play before we close. I think it's time for well past your lunchtime. Well past her lunch time, we've okay, got to let okay. her go. But we have to have some improvised piece well, for you, well, for, let... dinner, for our audience. <laughs> so... Okay, okay. Thank you, Aubrey. Thank you. I'll just say, uh, just now before I play this, a very, very big thank you. You know, um, um, shukriya, dhanyavad, namaste to you and to all your visions and which, what you've done till now. And you talked about uh, Dal Bahadur Shastri and going into the fields. And that's also a form of improvising on the spur of the moment. And what I'm going to do is try to do a little bit of what I would call fusion confusion. Yeah. I have no idea. I think you might recognize a, a bits and pieces here, quotations from different little pieces, which I've just put together to say a very, very big thank you and much respect for thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And if I may you. add, if I may add, Marilena, I think it's going to include some Indian spice. Let's try and see from which part of the country. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll come and borrow it from you. <laughs>
Wow, wow, wow. That was such a delight. Sheer delight. Namaste ji. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shukriya. <laughs> that had a blend of fur release with straws and somewhere over the rainbow and Indian rag and goem spice and tiko tiko and Bollywood spice and sapno kirani and dreams. And it's inspiring me to dream on. I don't want to stop. <laughs> That's fantastic. You are the piano, Rani. Okay. <laughs> so, Sharmila, the has no chance, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> well, if she were here, she would really go gaga, you know? That was fantastic. Thank you, thank thank you, you so much. much. Thank you Wish so you much. All really all appreciate it. For this new year, yes. thank you. much thank success. You. Keep thank well. Yes. Most important thing, and just let music sing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Marilyn, I wish you the same. And we look forward to our collaborations as planned yeah. and as shared. And in parting, you must have your lunch. So we're going to let you go, but we're going to play the last piece we recorded. Marilyn collaborating with Hotel Palindrome and, Palindrome. and here we have that piece of music to say goodbye. And friends, please chat away and express yourself, your appreciation on the WhatsApp. Sorry, not WhatsApp, the Facebook Live chat board. And let Marandana know what a super lady she is. Thank you. Oh, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be. Thank you. Take care. You. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you. And next time we'll have Mar Ranko. We shall talk about Ranko to give him our love. I and uh, we look forward to our times in the past. In the future, it's Thank good you. to go back and forth. Yeah, yes. take care. Thank bye you. bye. And now we have uh, Marilena Fernandez and Hotel Palindrome.
That was super brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. It, it's a brilliant way to end the evening. And uh, thank you so much. So we could go on for hours and hours and hours, but we Good shall meet again soon. We shall <laughs> up and we shall make music viral. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.